Today, I'm traveling down to Stanford, Connecticut to meet up with my friend Mark Herman. So you, you could YouTube yourself. Yeah, yeah, I, you know. From MS Herman and Company that specialize in steam cars and pretty much anything based in early motoring to see what's been left in the garage after all these years. All right, good to see you again. All right, man. What do we have behind the doors here? Well, behind the doors, we have a couple of really early brass era cars and both steam powered, which is kind of, kind of unique. Wow. This is a 1911 Stanley Steamer, 10 horsepower, but that's steam power rated, so it's much more powerful than the 10 horsepower might lead you to believe. This is a car that you can cruise down the road very co comfortably at 40 miles an hour. No kidding. Well, now what do we have over here? This is the big brother to that car. This is a 1911, this is actually a 1910. This is a Model 70, it's a 20 horsepower Touring, so that's 10 horsepower, this one's 20, which is really kind of a, a remarkable car. Now this car can carry five people, very comfortable, 45 miles an hour. It could probably hit 65 miles an hour. And so when you're in this car, you, you really know you're in something back in the day. 65 miles This an is hour. a serious piece of equipment because this is the transition from a carriage to an automobile, really. And now yes, we've now had- Now you're in my world. <laughs> now we're in your <laughs> world. Yeah, we have that and mold and mildew and all kinds of things that, that the, uh, the new owners are gonna definitely want you to uh, take a look at. Inside the garage and on the walls, I noticed engineered drawings, trains, mini tractors, which are super cool, engines, and even a caboose outside. And I wanted to meet the mastermind behind all these creations. I didn't inquire, I built them. You built them? I built each of those cars. It took about four years. What does this machine behind behind you do? Like, what, What's the purpose of that machine? What's the lathe? Well, the lathe cuts round, round parts. And this is the milling machine. The two critical parts of a shop are lathes, milling machines. So most of the parts that are on that car right now came from that machine? One of the two machines, or, or the milling machine. The milling machine cuts straight parts. Most people don't remember what milling machines do. So this is, this is insane. There's a track that goes all the way around. It's a beautiful house, but can we go inside? Absolutely. Well, these, are steam, these are steam trains, yeah. Unreal. Then look, there's these, they still spin. It's crazy. This, this would be like the shot of the day. I'll pull it up there, just. <laughs> After my joy ride, I took a quick peek underneath the car just to check out all the copper from underneath. And it's unbelievably gorgeous from the bottom up. Look at all these little spots here. I built four blankets, yeah. Imagine having the wherewithal to be able to build all of this yourself. Like mill all of these things yeah. in your own like, oh, great. home. So you'll have to rock it. Now to get these out of here, we first moved the 1911 three passenger car. So I'm not sure, we don't know about the, whether those brakes work or not. The handbrake will work. You just pull up like that. Ah. Then afterwards, the 1910, which required the top to come down. And it's a bit of a procedure for sure, but the design of every detail is what's so fascinating to me about these early 1900 cars. After my first ride in two Stanley steamers, we're getting them up onto the trailer right now. They're gonna head back to Mark's shop. He's gonna do some work on it. In the next couple of weeks, they'll head over to the ammo studio where we're gonna detail them and hopefully send them off to their new home. A few weeks later, they arrived at the studio for a detail. Now, the first one was the 1910, and when we're done with that one, we're gonna move over to the 1911 or the three-passenger one, the red one. So we have a lot of work ahead of us. As you can see under the lights, this is the definition of detailing. Tons of brass, lots of crevices and seams. There's mold all over the leather. The brass is very dull, so we're gonna have to bring that back. The wheels are disgusting. There's spider webs everywhere. And most of the body is actually made out of wood and it has mold on it. So this is by no means an easy or what I would call a typical detail. Now, because it's wood and it's very old, power washing is not a wise move here. So we frothied everything with our hoseless wash formula designed to add lubrication so you don't scratch when you're wiping, sort of similar to what a regular wash might be, but you're doing it without a hose, I mean, you're doing it without water. Plus, it also evaporates really quickly to avoid over soaking sensitive areas. By adding a lubricant before you wipe any surface, you are avoiding what we call dry wiping. Now, dry wiping tends to be the culprit behind the heavy spider webbing or the swirled paint, especially when you're taking a car to a car show, that kind of thing. So anytime you wipe any car, you wanna use as much lubrication as possible, and water is usually that best lubricant, but in this case, we just can't use it. 
As I became more comfortable with the integrity of the material, I used the Pro Foamer to lubricate and clean pretty much everything on top and underneath the car. Just make sure you have plenty of towels on hand. Excuse me, Mr. Wheelman, do you have any size 30? Just about then, I called in my reinforcement for the day, Renan from Ultimate Gloss. He's awesome, he was giving me a hand with all the lower portions of the cleaning while I was focusing on the very moldy seats with lather and interior brush. Then I steam cleaned each seat button inside, which is kind of the first time I've ever had to do that. While cleaning the wooden seat bottom, I opened up that compartment to find my first ever mouse nest in a steam car. I was actually kind of excited about that. We have yet another mouse nest. Look at this. Okay, at this point we've cleaned the seats. They may need a, a second go. They're super old, but the goal here is of course preservation. So you kind of just have to let it sit, look at a few spots, go back and clean that up. In the process of doing that, I looked at the floorboards and you can see these dots everywhere. The little, look like red, maybe a little bit yellowish dots. And of course that's urine. When the urine hits these, uh, this material right here, it's actually causing it to stain. Furthermore, you can see the poop, and then you can see this area right here, which indicates they, they did their droppings right here, it came up, and they went down. So what that means is I have to pull all the floor boards out because I'm guaranteed to find a mouse nest somewhere either up front or in the back, but even on old cars like this, there's gonna be a mouse somewhere. Oh, there you go. There's poop everywhere here. Seeing that? Next, Renan and I removed the heavy top to clean it separately off the car with frothy, a scrubber, and the air diffuser mixed with shag, and the 50-50 was huge. Now at this point in the detail, I was most concerned about the brass. There's a lot to do here. So the first thing we did was set up a table, put a thick moving blanket on top, and then removed each light and lantern. There's a reason that these older cars used brass is because copper and zinc are not really conducive to flames. And inside here, there's a flame, that's the headlight. You can see it in there. There's a piece of glass back there. Now, it probably wasn't very bright, but it was better than like squinting in, in the middle of the night. You have a latex glove on, you put this one on over it, and then you soak your hand full of Barkeeper's Friend or whatever you're using. And you can get in here and use your finger to get in all the tight spots where a machine won't work. Now, if you're a professional detailer or you're just a super hobbyist, I have one inch, low, this is a one inch pneumatic, and then I have the Rupes Nano over here, another one inch that's electric. Are these full-time battery? Cause you're gonna need it. Okay. With respects to the product that I'm using, I've tried a couple of different products. The one that I've, I have the most success with is Barkeeper's Friend. Now this was a recommendation from Kevin Brown, of course. He's had a zillion years of doing this. And the particular thing in this one that I find uh, most helpful is what they call oxalic acid. So when you put this on, you're gonna have a waft. You're gonna have a smell and you're like, oh boy, I'm getting some disease right now. That's really strong. That's the oxalic acid doing its thing. The backstory on this, because this one's so old, this is from 1882. This is based on a plant, meaning rhubarb. And when, you, when the guy was cooking it, 
as he was cooking it, he was cooking it in a, like a very dirty pan. And then when he was done with it, all the oxalic acid came out and made the pan super shiny. So that's, that's a very long story made short. But the idea is, or the concept is, this is made from you know, natural ingredients, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, from my perspective, the bottom line is, Use machines when you can. If you can't or it's very intricate, use this glove technique. It's kind of cool, but it is very taxing on your hands. And then if I had to choose out of all these cleaners, uh, Barkeeper's Friend is the one that we're gonna be using on the rest of these cars. Look at that brass. Tell me that doesn't look like a million bucks now. After a few hours of polishing brass, Jordan hopped in to pick up my slack while I started polishing the paint on the body of the car. Now, for the metal fenders, I used a medium wool pad and finished with a yellow foam pad. However, on the wooden body, I only used the yellow foam pad and my new polishing fluid just to be safe. At this point in the night, and as we're rounding third on the car, we were all working together. Me on brass duty, Renan waxing, and of course Jordan buffing off the wax. Then Jordan applied Restore to the leather to kill any remaining mold. With the seats now completely dry and mold free, Renan added mousse to the dried out leather by hand to reach the button areas and the tight spots, and they looked a thousand times better. Finally, we put everything back that was cleaned off the car. This is when you know it's late at night. <laughs> and then clean the foggy glass with a scrub pad and a squeegee, polished the whistle underneath, that was kind of cool, applied mud to the rubber, and then reinstalled the floorboards. See? You're not the boss. Look at these little rust spark. This is all from urine. These are the things that fascinate me at 10 o'clock at night after 12 hours of polishing and Bright and early the next day, number okay. two arrived in the same condition. But because of a shipping dilemma, I only had about 20 hours to get this thing in shape before they both left for Michigan. For the record, these just needed to be cleaned and spruced up, that kind of thing, not really made Pebble Beach ready. So we did what we could in the time that we had. But this time, I called in round two of the Calvary. Americo from Get In Detail Auto Spa in Southington, Connecticut, and of course, Kamal Holly from Holly's Auto Detailing Service of Long Island to help speed up the process. Together, we all worked on the brass from the green car that was left over from the night before because it needed some extra love. With everything looking as good as time allowed on the 1910 green machine, we reinstalled the lights and the lantern and the before and after was absolutely amazing. This is such a beautiful machine. I just, it was, I was speechless in person. Just about then, Mark and the boys arrived to reinstall the cover, which by the way is a multi-person adventure for sure. But when it is up, it's remarkable to see and feel the craftsmanship from the early 1900s. After all of our pictures to remember the moment, we pushed her outside and into the trailer. After about 30 seconds of high fives and that of boys, we had to hop over into bay number two and start the cleaning process all over again by using frothy. Then we did the paint restoration. We polished the brass all over again, but this time I'm going to spare you the headache from the ammonia smell during the brass cleaning and just show you the after shots after many, many hours of cleaning. Well guys, the 1910 and the 1911 are all done, look absolutely amazing, and off to a new home. Big thank you to Renan, Kamal Holly, Americo, Jordan, and of course, Mark and his team. If you guys have any questions, you know where to find me, Larry at AmmoNYC.com. I'll see you on the next one.
To see the full length behind the scenes footage and stories about the history of steam engines, check out my second channel called The Ammo Studio. I'll put a link above where you can take a deep dive into all things detailing. As always, thanks for watching and please support us by subscribing. We'll see you next time. Hopefully make the customer happy. Hopefully make the customer happy. You're gonna be happy!